Hey everyone, this is Elias from RevMatch Media, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2023 Lexus GX460. Now, I know we've reviewed a previous GX, and some of the things are still the same. Not a bad thing, but one major thing has changed. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Now we get started in the front and we can see this thing is mean. I love this design. Yeah, a couple of things. So we do have the triple beam headlight system here, which looks nice. It really lights up the road. The automatic uh, high beam is really good. No issues there, no complaints. Again, it just looks really cool. I love the frosted uh, boomerang we have here. Uh, we also have the washers for the headlights, especially when we had this on a week where we were getting a ton of snow and a ton of ice too. So yeah, that was a nice touch to have uh, for that. They're dirty a little bit now, it's daytime. We don't really need them, but at night, I'll probably wash these guys. And down here we have the LED fog light as well, which was a nice touch. We have the big grill, love this. Everyone, it's a hit or miss with everyone. I love it, it looks really good. It's nice and dirty right now, which with a GX, it looks really nice when it's clean and really, really good when it's when it's dirty. So yeah, it's a little bit dirty here. Uh, we do have the uh, sport uh, design package on this, so we do get a little bit of a front spoiler uh, on this. Um, yeah, it's it's not a big for me. It probably wouldn't go with that package. Uh, you do get a little bit of other things that are that are sort of luxuried or sport given <laughs> design but yeah overall i do love this front we do have the front facing camera in here which has been great and yeah i'm gonna let the cat out of the bag the reason why this is a big big upgrade is the infotainment system the infotainment system has a new screen so it it just looks way better and with that being said the fact that you have the front facing camera it just looks way better when you are dealing with uh, seeing the feed on the screen. It wasn't until we had that screen that I realized how much better these cameras are, unless they were changed, but if they weren't, that screen definitely helped out a lot. Now, let's go ahead and see what we have under this hood. We get under the hood and we have the 4.6 liter V8 cranking out 301 horsepower and 329 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to the six-speed auto. It is a tried and true engine. This thing is a literal tank. And yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of a, it's a double-edged sword for me. I love the fact that I'm seeing in Facebook groups 300,000 miles with just basic maintenance on these, but I would like to have a little bit more fuel economy. I know next engine is most likely going to be either a hybrid or a turbocharged um, option to, you know, maybe V6 with a turbo. So those are some of the biggest possibilities that can happen with it. If you keep the reliability of those 300,000, you can put whatever the hell you guys want in this Lexus. But that's the thing with this is it has the durability of a tank it really does and it's great you know it really gets this big guy off the line even though there are other suvs that have had like higher power numbers the low end torque of this is incredible it really gets this big guy going right off the bat and you need that when you can tow 6500 pounds with this because this is a body on frame suv meaning we have a little bit more towing capacity than your typical SUVs, but it doesn't drive like that. The other thing as well is with the uh, suspension, which we'll definitely kind of get into, the, the KDS uh, system is so, so good. It's basically uh, controls it while you're on the road, but when you're off-roading, it lets the body flex. It lets the suspension flex a lot more to, to give you the articulation that you need. It's incredible. And again, with the power that this thing delivers and to all the wheels, it's just awesome. I love it. It sounds like a big V8. Uh, the fans are a little bit on the bigger side, which sometimes you kind of hear that. It's just that kind of oh, kind of V8 sound. Yeah, you can rewind and hear me say that again. But yeah, it's... I love it. I love it. 
<sighs> I'm scared for it, but I wish it were better in gas mileage. That's the only thing. But again, make sure you have a gas card or gas savings. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and see what we have in those wheels and tires. You get down to the wheel and tire package and we have this nice black 19 inch wheel and it is wrapped in the 255-55 Dunlop tire. Now, a couple of things with this. First, because we have the sport package, we do get the black wheels. Nice design to them. I'd probably get the sport just because of these wheels, unless I decide to go after market, which I probably would in a GX. Um, but a couple of things. Uh, we had snow this week, we had ice this week, and these things really saved me. Yeah, these tires gripped the snow, actually gripped ice, when we had to kind of go over an overpass, actually turn left onto an overpass, and yeah, this thing started sliding a little bit, but immediately traction control, the power distribution, the tires, brakes everything just worked suspension worked really well to get this guy rotated because it started going a little bit straight and then it said no we're gonna go ahead and, and turn you the cars behind me were suffering significantly more so this setup has been incredible love it it gave us that sense of security it gave us that confidence to get the power down uh, from that big v8 um, but it was just incredible i love the way that this road as well the suspension going from from sport to normal to soft a uh, majority of the time i was in soft but it just did the work it was or comfort actually but it just you know these roads like this that are unpaved were super smooth when we when we were hitting some bumpy roads as well just super smooth if you want a little bit of sharpness to the suspension put it in sport and you are definitely feeling the bumps a little bit more for a better responsive uh, feel to it but overall this thing has been incredible i cannot praise how good this is would i change this yeah you know if <laughs> if i'm not going to touch it this is great setup to have if i decide to have some fun with it definitely smaller wheel and nice and meteor tires uh, a little bit more aggressive probably um, but just making sure i don't kind of affect the awesome feel that i had with this well let's go ahead and see what we have on the side we get to the side and we can see this thing is nice i love it it's nice and big it's in your face and a couple of things we have the atomic silver it's not the i not my first choice unfortunately it's one of the choices when you go with the interior that this has uh which you'll see soon but yeah it's unfortunate because the interior looks so nice and we are limited with again maybe not the most maybe the loudest colors it's very muted but it's still a nice silver but let's take a look at the pro side profile. We do have this, the air suspension with this being the luxury. Uh, we do have it at the high setting right now. We can see we have a good amount of ground clearance. Um, probably could have had a little bit more if we didn't go with the sport um, package, which you can see the lip goes a little bit lower there. Uh, with this being the sport package, we do have the chrome um, kind of accent to the mirror here we do have the camera down here for the 360 degree view which has been just really really good with that screen that i mentioned and yeah overall we can see the side profile is really nice we have a nice uh step in here uh to to get into this and yeah let's talk about keyless entry we have the key fob we'll go ahead and lock this guy okay it's locked keys in my pocket i go to reach in and it unlocks yeah so i can go ahead and do that get in and i'm good to go i go ahead and close that off have a little sensor there and now i go to the back and yeah not gonna happen so we don't have anything in the back so you are needing to use the front sensor and then open up the back you can go ahead and close that no sensor as well to to lock back here so again just a matter of doing that now, let's go ahead and hop in so I can go ahead and show you from the highest down to the lowest. And there you go. Not super 
difference, but it's nice that even at the lowest, you still have a good amount of, of clearance to get this guy in a garage. Maybe it's on a lower garage, um, but definitely the clearance is there to get this beast off-roading, which I have, and it's just been spectacular. Um, but overall, I do love the side profile of this. So let's go ahead and head to the back and see what we have back there. We get to the back and we can see this back is big. It's really bold and nice. I love it. So a couple of things with this, we get to start from the top. We have this nice little spoiler. It does hide the windshield wiper uh, right in here. So it's not in your view of the uh, rear window. A couple of things with this though, is that the wiping area is kind of poor. I wish it were designed differently to maybe catch a little bit more. I know obviously we're, we're right there at the edge to this piece there, which I'll show you what that's for, but I don't know. I feel like other SUVs that have a rear wiper and have something, which again, we'll, I'll show you what I mean, has a better area to clean. Not sure. So I, I just wish it had that. But speaking about this rear window, is if you press this little button here and you use this, yeah. <laughs> so you're able to just grab something if you need to or throw something in there, especially if you have a pet and you just wanna throw in something in there and not have to have them come out because you open the door. Yeah, it just makes sometimes easier to just throw things in there. The other thing is, I'll show you why we have this. But yeah, just a matter of going ahead and closing that and then we get to the rear door. So the rear door actually has a handle here. So I can go ahead and push that, but actually you have to press unlock. I wish it had a sensor that when I put my hand there, it unlocks with the proximity of the key, obviously, um, but you do have a lock and unlock button there. So you push, you squeeze actually in there, you open this guy up and lo and behold, you have a rear opening door which I always, always loved with the GX. Yeah, my previous video, uh, one of the things I wished for was that this was motorized and I still think it would be cool. It would be nice to have that so that you can just go ahead and open it and have it slide there. So not, I still would like to have that, but we open it up and we have a good amount of space. We do have the three row seating uh, in this and with the three row seating, you're not gonna get much space for cargo. So this has been down the whole time. We also had a big grocery shop and this thing was great to load this guy up right before we got our really bad snowstorm. Uh, and yeah, it's been really good. You do have, what I do love about it is that the rear seats are electric folding. So you do have the buttons here on the, on the left-hand side, but overall it's nice. You do have an area for seating here. It's a little dirty, but I'll sacrifice <laughs> getting a little dirty for the sake to tell you, this is really comfortable to just sit back, take this out on, um, you know, into the woods, enjoy a good time with friends, family members, pets. It's just a really fun adventure vehicle. So yeah, having that there is nice. <laughs> and obviously you have the option of locking it. So you can go ahead and lock this and you can see it's not gonna let you uh, get that going, um, but you can unlock it and you're set. So I'll go ahead and close this off. And one more thing, we do have a black exhaust tip. That's nice. It's part of the uh, sport uh, package, which yeah, I'm always a sucker for the, for the, for the exhaust tips that are black like that. And we have a little bit of this rear spoiler down here, but overall this thing is nice. Oh, the taillights. Yeah. I didn't start with that because I don't know. <laughs> Usually I'm a sucker for transparent kind of uh, plastic on the outside with cool design elements. It's got the cool design elements, but I think this is wrong color. The inside element should definitely show red to just give it a little bit of a different design. I don't like the full clear areas here. I do love the red that we have on the side because it looks really good with that black trim. Probably my only design thing. I've seen different, you know, options to change this and probably one of the first things I do. But yeah, overall, I do love the, the rear. Now with the remote, uh, oh, remote, if you hold it down, you can pop this. This, you have to go with the unlock button. 
remote start is tricky. It's a Lexus Toyota. Tricky. So let's see if I can get this. One time, two times, three times, hold. Yeah, I got it. I <laughs> fired it up. Yeah, it's kind of a tricky. You have to be looking at the really the lights, whether it's the tail lights or the or the headlights, to see the markers kind of go with you. Yeah, it's a shame that it's not just one button, let it do it, or just press a button twice. It's a sequence that can be kind of tricky, very hit or miss. So I wish that were changed. But let's go ahead and hop in and go for a ride. We get inside the GX and we have a major upgrade to this interior. There's one major upgrade to this, but let's get started on the other things. So we get started on the door and the door is super comfortable. You know, I can put my arm at the very top. I can put it down low and just kind of hold on to the handle itself. Really comfortable, no complaints there. The only thing is that the um, window controls are a little kind of further out beyond the arm uh, kind of the handle so I was kind of like having to reach over a little bit too too much than I, I would like small picking nitpicking at things um, but yeah that that's the only thing I would say with this but yeah we have some nice finishes we do have the uh, red leather on the armrest which looks so so nice then we get over to the seats and it gets even better yeah I love this red interior it's unfortunate that I do have to pick kind of a boring selection of silvers and grays for this amazing red interior and i know it's not everyone's kind of go-to but my wife's a redhead <laughs> so you know i like standing out i like these uh you know loud colors on interiors but yeah the red is definitely a nice touch to it a couple of things as well is we do have both vented and heated seats. Let me tell you, so I, so we've been getting extremely cold weather uh, to the fact that it was snowing. Yeah, we had snow this week and yeah, we put the heaters on and we had to tone it down because it was really, really hot. Yeah, these things get really nice and toasty. So we did have to kind of dial back. We do have like three little settings uh, on a dial knob uh, down there and yeah to the point where I even had to use the cooling because it was a little too too warm and after I used the cooling I had my sweater on it was going through it was that's how strong this venting is so I do love that uh, there's other times where I'll have like the thinnest of, of t-shirts on I put other cars uh, you know venting option really really blasting and you can't even feel it so the fact that I was able to still feel the cold air through the um, through my jacket was really really good, and the adjustability is there. You can position this in the you know your perfect sweet spot to be comfortable and enjoy the ride. And again, did I mention the red looks nice? They're so soft and comfortable. It's just it's great seating. Then we get over to the steering wheel and the steering wheel is nice. We do have uh, kind of your typical Lexus uh, steering wheel, which is nice. I, we do have that kind of design in the middle. The, the sides are leather with the smoother, uh, what I believe is wood on, on different parts of the wheel as well. But the leather is nice and soft, nice and plush as well. Uh, we do have the buttons in the on the left for volume control and next track, uh, which next track should be down. It should not be up like this is programmed. Again, we're going down the list of songs. We're not going up the list of songs. Yeah, w w that needs to get flipped. We also have the controls for the gauge cluster on the right hand side, as well as some cruise control items there as well. Then we get over to the gauge cluster and we have analog gauges with a digital screen in the middle uh digital screen is extremely outdated um you know there's not much to it i wish there was a little bit more to it it would be a nice little touch to kind of have um i don't know just something different or you know what i wish it looked differently and not kind of that bluish purple uh, feel we get to it just a little bit higher resolution screen I would say and maybe the gauge cluster I, I wouldn't be surprised if if the next generation goes full digital uh, which isn't a bad thing Toyota and Lexus have have made some nice 
digital displays uh, available for their inf for their gauge clusters. Um, but yeah, overall, it's very simple, uh, kind of straight to the point, which I guess is good. You're enjoying <laughs> the ride kind of thing. Um, but yeah, we have that. The only thing I would say is the fuel gauge. Fuel gauge is a little tiny. Yeah, the temperature gauge is not bad being that tiny, but I felt like any small movement was like, whoa, am I, <laughs> did I just consume an eighth of the, of the gas tank? Which uh, with this big boy, very possible, but yeah, that would only be my major gripe with that. But you also have the, you know, how much to empty. So that's not that big of a concern. Then we get over to the infotainment system. Yes, yes, finally, we have a touch screen. And noticing when the sun is hitting it right now, I can see my fingerprints just concentrated in this area. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. We like the, the touch screens, uh, especially in this one. This one's actually really good. It's very reachable, no complaints there. It's nice and long, wide screen. It has Apple CarPlay. It is wired though. So we didn't quite get the full wireless Apple CarPlay experience, but we do have a wired Apple CarPlay, which is so needed, at least for me. For me, I, I you know, sometimes I'm going to these places that I don't know. I'd like to have a map that I'm familiar with that I can program really quickly on there and be good to go. Plus my music, I can easily control it. And it's just, it's such a better experience than when we had the USB uh, kind of feel to it and we had to constantly use the, the other map or we had to constantly have our phone just, yeah. So this is nice. I love this massive, massive upgrade from that previous display. And the crazy thing is, it's not just the fact that we have a uh, Apple CarPlay, but be I guess, I don't know if the cameras were upgraded, but the cameras look way better in, in, in this one than it did in the previous one we reviewed. So it looks like the cameras were giving a good feed to the previous system. It just didn't have the right screen for it. And this does, this has the right screen for those camera systems that we have in this. It looks a lot sharper. So yes, massive, massive upgrade to it. So do yourself a favor and get a 2023 with the Apple CarPlay or the better infotainment screen on it. Then we come down to the AC controls and this has been really nice. I have been loving this AC control because we've been having to switch constantly with the different you know temperatures that we're getting plus you know we're warming up in here we need to defrost so switching that has been extremely easy to to just kind of set up there so loving that then we have your um multi-terrain select options here crawl control which uh helped us out getting up to our uh, up our block really uh when when it was literally ice so it did a great job uh, the crawl control was great getting us up no complaints there and we have the suspension with this having the airbag suspension uh or the adaptive suspension we can we can make it go sport comfort or normal it's been in comfort 99 percent of the times except for that one percent of the time that i was checking to see if you do feel a difference and i will tell you you do you do those small bumps really feel a lot more uh stiffer so to speak than if you had in it had it in comfort and it just kind of swallows up those small bumps. So, and which I do have it in comfort right now. And we've been hitting our typical road that doesn't have the best of terrain. So yeah, it's been super comfortable. Then on the right hand side, we have our, our suspension, our air suspension to raise it up and down or to turn it off. And then our four wheel drive modes there, which we'll get into a little bit lower. We have our CD player and our, uh, radio controls here. Uh, the only thing I would say is, I know this is kind of too much to ask, but the having the radio lower than the AC control was a little confusing because I kept trying to, or or the uh, drivetrain settings because I kept trying to raise and lower the volume with the um, <laughs> with the multi-terrain select knob. So yeah, I wish this were kind of there, and it's not a very uh, yeah, it's not a very 
obvious button as well. It kind of blends in with the black of the radio itself. We come a little bit lower and we have our USB connection. Uh, you, we have USB-A, we have an aux input as well. We do have a little cubby, which is kind of almost useless because uh, I do have to put my phone kind of diagonal or else it wouldn't fit. It's a very small area for a phone, which is kind of a shame because with the connection being there, that's typically where you're going to want to put the your phone. So yeah, we have that. And then we have the uh, seat venting and the seat warming uh, little knob. It's kind of like a little little dial, like a little dial you go up and down, but we have that there and yeah, it works well. It's actually really close to uh, a nice little reach as well. We come over to the shifter and we have a nice shifter, nice leather feel to it. Um, yeah, we'll get into the sport mode that this has. On the right hand side, we have my least favorite thing. We have this little pad, this little input pad that we get with these newer Lexus. Uh, I liked the previous joystick that we had in an RX. Way 2019. That was my favorite because if I needed to go diagonal, I could literally just throw the joystick uh, over to the top right and it would go to the top right. I haven't really been using this much. Like I said, I've been using the touchscreen as you guys saw my little cluster of fingerprints there. Um, but yeah, I, I could I could do without this. I don't need this because I have the touchscreen, which is going to work significantly better than having to navigate things with this trackpad. Then we come back to the cup holders and uh, someone asked, do they still have the same cup holder for 2023? And I took a picture, sent it to them, and they said, yes, the same crappy cup holders. <laughs> now, I, I guess they, they have an issue. They said their issue is if the cup is too tall, it's kind of difficult to, to put your hand on the shifter. Um, and I can see that being a possibility. Then we come back a little bit more and we have the uh, armrest and the armrest is nice. So we do have the split where, you know, the person, oh, I see why. Yes, it's the armrest. If you put the armrest forward, you're gonna hit the cup <laughs> there. So yes, definitely uh, I can see that being a problem. So yeah, you can't put the, the armrest forward. So you gotta kind of have a keep it back, but I don't have my cup on the left side. I have it on the right. So I can extend my uh, armrest and it's, nice it's definitely feels a lot better to have it in this position than it did way back there so it is a nice touch and then you can also just kind of open it up and inside we do have a good amount of space we do have actually enough for a couple of tissues tissue boxes so yeah that actually fits in there really well we close that off pull that back and you're set we get to the back and the back with this we do have the captain's seats and yeah not a big fan of captain seats because again i have the middle open in in heavier braking things you know if you have groceries in the back they can come forward now if you have a a, a kind of cover for that that would be perfect you're good to go no complaints yeah i lose a person in the middle but the two on the sides will be significantly more comfortable but yeah i, I would like the rear bench more than having that captain's chair there then we get to the third row and it's been down. <laughs> it's been down. It's not that much uh, of space. Um, yeah, I've been using the cargo area a lot more. I prefer that. I need that more than anything. In a pinch, yeah, if I need to carry more people, but it will suffer with the cargo area. That's why you get carriers on top. <laughs> <laughs> get something, you know, put the put the uh, bars across and just get a carrier and carry the rest of it. And this guy can do it. Yeah, definitely. Now let's talk performance. We're dealing with a 4.6 liter V8 cranking out 301 horsepower and 329 pound feet of torque. It is connected to the six speed auto. Now this thing is incredible. So <laughs> let's start from a stop and This thing has the low end torque that you need. This has the low end torque that you want. Yeah, <laughs> it's surprising that, yeah, it's not the biggest number. You know, there's other SUVs that have so much more power, but this feels pretty good, pretty good off the line. And when you're already up to speed, it just wants to keep going. 
yeah, it's surprisingly pretty good. Where it does suffer is miles per gallon. Yes, just, just yeah, commit to having a gas card, having <laughs> to, to get those miles or points or, you know, discounts that you get for, for owning part of the gas station. <laughs> it really, you have to come to that conclusion. And yeah, I guess just, just plan you know, have a, have a savings for that. Is it worth it? Yes, totally, totally worth it. The other thing as well with this, and we'll go ahead and put it in sport mode. The other thing with this, yeah, it's just really good. Now the suspen the suspension is nice. The suspension is super good in slower speeds, in comfort mode, in sport mode, in normal mode, in any mode you put it. Obviously you have to select the modes that kind of work with this, but even just kind of now getting the power down, you know, it's squatting when it needs to, it's holding it when it needs to. It's just really good. My only complaint with this, I would say is the transmission in sport mode or in the manual mode. It's pointless. It's pointless because I'll be changing gears and and it doesn't change for me. Like I can go all the way to sixth and it's just weird. It's like I put the gear and it's more of like the limit. It's not like this is the gear we're on. It's just what it's gonna limit to. It's just, I don't know. Cause I've, I've been in, in, in let's say fourth gear and I go up on the gears and I don't feel the transmission shifting. My RPMs aren't changing or anything. It's just really weird with the sport mode. Only, only big complaint with this drivetrain. We were out and about the day before we got a massive snowstorm here and it started icing up when we were out on the road. And the crazy thing is we were able to, uh, you know, we had to kind of exit the highway. And when we went on an overpass, we caught a slick of ice. And this thing <laughs> literally said, nope, you're not gonna slide. And it recovered us and, you know, traction control worked. It got this guy rotated because the, the, the SUV started sliding a little bit. Uh, you know, I was making a left and it was still kind of just going straight. The car behind me, not so, <laughs> not as fortunate. Um, thankfully they were able to still kind of save it, but they were significantly closer to the sidewalk uh, of hitting it. So this, was incredible and when i had to go run some errands to get get us food no issues with having this out on this on the snow it just was a dream to drive in that that terrain and yes i know i'm gonna hear oh texas drivers no but it's different when even people from the north are saying that they've never driven in bad conditions like this because we don't have the infrastructure of of getting salt on the roads and things like that so this vehicle was the best vehicle I think of that I, we could have had this week to deal with those bad conditions. It really was. And then when everything melted, uh, you could have fun with it. You could really... <laughs> now I'm taking this off-road and it is a monster. It is a monster with those drivetrain, uh, with those uh, multi-terrain select. It's just, it can tackle literally anything. and. Now, when I, when I went to, when we got home from that drive, my street is a little bit on the slippier side. So I did go to uh, four low so that I can make sure that I had enough traction to climb. And I put the crawl control. Oh my God, it was, it literally was driving itself. <laughs> it was literally grabbing traction when it needed to. I heard, you know, just the, the system working, putting the power where it needed to. It was just incredible. I loved this thing. Yes, I want this. Oh, and the 6,500 pound, pounds of towing. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely tow the Miata in this. And it still have leftover power for, you know, a bigger trailer or something or or another car maybe it's just it's incredible what this awesome thing is yeah i love it i've been so much i've had so much fun in this and my kiddo has loved the back seats no issues there my wife has has said this is a dream to drive it really is and 
the fact that we have these comfortable seats, just everything works so well in this. This was a big factor of, you know, of us not getting it before the infotainment system. We didn't like that older screen. We like this new screen. We like the technology bits that we have right now. And yeah, it's been really, really amazing. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the 2023 Lexus GX 460. And remember, find the right gear. See ya.